Hello, welcome to the fourth and final day of the 2018 Goodwood Festival of Speed, where I'm finishing it with something special. This Maserati Gran Cabrio. Right, this is the paddock area during the Goodwood Festival of Speed. This is the Michelin Supercar paddock. Which is basically where it's all happening. But today we're down here with Maserati. Interesting fact, uh, outside of the Levante, I have never spent a great deal of time in a Maserati. I've always heard them driving past me and they sound unbelievable. You have to approach it, even though it sounds like a sports car, a very loud sports car, this is much more of a Grand Tour. It's not about lap times, it's about good times. And today it's extremely good because this thing is rocking a naturally aspirated V8 pushing out 460 horsepower. So we're going to start this up very shortly. Uh, unfortunately, it's 35 degrees and we have to wear long sleeves because we're in the UK and track regulations say that we have to wear long sleeves. So in a minute, we're going to put jackets on. Don't think we're idiots, we just have to. Uh, thankfully, this is the convertible. So we'll be able to use Mother Nature as air conditioning and then we're going to immerse you really in what it's like going up the Festival of Speed hill climb in something that sounds like this. <laughs> How good does that sound? It also looks like they've upgraded the infotainment screen as well, which is pretty awesome. Belt up. I've got to say, Festival of Speed has been super intense, so it's really nice to be able to sort of do my last drive in something so beautiful. It's going to be a real tranquil finish flying up the hill climb in something that, okay, it sounds pretty loud, but a nice place to be. Okay, skid lid on, long sleeves on, roof down. Wow. You know, I've, I've had the luxury and honor of being able to do this for a few years in a row, but every time you pull up to that start line, your heart starts going, you see the color of the cars in front of you, and you realize that any second now, you are next. We've got marshals waving us forwards. If they're gonna check helmets, wristbands, that's where you settle in. And you realize that not only are there thousands of people watching you, you're also being live streamed on television. <laughs> are we ready? Are we up? greatest car park has come to an end. We now all stack up and go back down the hill and then we're gonna rendezvous back at the Maserati stand. Let me just tell you something, 460 horsepower, never felt so cool. Let's go down. Okay, 
back at the mothership. We're at Maserati HQ here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Now, despite the fact that we've just stepped out of the Grand Cabrio Sport, 460 horsepower, wild V8, this thing, I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks menacing, but you would never assume that this thing is rocking, wait for it, 590 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> in an SUV. Now, for those of you guys that watch this channel regularly, you may or may not know that I am on the hunt for a new SUV. Uh, this is well in line. I didn't expect this to be here. The reason being that it's actually gonna be launching in America first. Now, that's not normally the case. So Americans, I'm super jealous. Anyone over there wants to invite me over to go and drive it, that would be amazing. Ferrari developed V8, twin turbocharged engine. And the great thing about it is, that it is a Maserati. Now, at the minute, the SUV market's interesting because quite a lot of the products are sort of me too SUVs. Every brand is launching one, but when you understand the philosophy and history of Maserati, they started, their very first car was a race car over 100 years ago, right? So the DNA, which you can see from that MC12 over there, which by the way, was incredibly successful in endurance racing, has filtered down into their more daily drivers, such as this. Honestly, I'm dying to get in one. Maserati, if you're watching, please arrange that because I would imagine it sounds and drives fantastic. Anyway, speaking of things that were unexpected, let's move down the line. Uh, if any of you guys watched my videos with Maserati at the beginning of the year when it was nice and snowy and they sent me to Cormier in Italy, you'd be forgiven for not wanting to associate four-wheel drive with the Maserati brand because as I just said, they are inherently more of a sports car brand. This is a four-wheel drive Maserati. I feel the need to share that with you because everyone I speak to, it's the last thing on their mind that they can have four wheel drive traction from this car. We have it here, SQ4. Same four wheel drive system that is out of the Levante. Take it from me while we're in this environment. It's beautiful, lush and hot. I drove it in the snow. Not only had it got loads of traction, but it was also playful too. So the car doesn't take itself too seriously. It's still very engaging, but I just wanted to highlight it because the amount of people that I speak to in passing who don't realize that Maserati offer four wheel drive saloon cars is astounding. And then we move on to the Quattroporte. Now that name is for me synonymous with Italian luxury grand tours. This being the latest. Uh, George, if you want to skip around there and let's take these guys on the inside and show them what it's like to be in a beautiful luxury Italian grand tour. And behold, seamless transition, the innards of the Quattroporte. There's something about Italians and the way that they engineer emotion into a car. I don't have the keys, we're on a stand, but I can already feel simply by the smell of being in here. There is an element of emotion and care and passion that is inherently in every stitch. As I mentioned, this brand is over a hundred years old. They came from racing and what they're very proud of is the story of the brand. Now, there is an element which, again, might not be widely known. The symbol of Maserati is the Trident. The significance of that is that the number three, the three tips of the Trident has become significant in the design language of the car. Let me show you what I mean on the outside. Let's work our way around to the front. Obviously, the first thing you see when you hit the front of the car is the big Maserati Trident. That is also actually disguising the radar system in that car. But there's very subtle hints at the number three throughout the design language of the car. Indicators on the headlights, laid out in three. Ports on the side, three ports. Even the spokes on the wheels are arranged in a configuration of three. That's just a few small details, but this is the design language that resonates through every single range of the Maserati lineup. Speaking of which, this car, last but not least, this is the car that I'm most familiar with. This is the Levante that I drove at first and fell in love with the concept of an Italian SUV. It might not be something that you think of at first when you think of Italian cars, particularly sporty ones like this, um, but I spent two days up in the Italian Alps and I, the first thing that came to mind for me was being a sort of die-hard petrol head at heart was imagine one day when they stick a really great big engine in, in this car. Well, we opened our stand tour with exactly that and if it blends the quality and sophistication of the interior with an engine developed by their buddies across the road in Maranello, surely that has got to be one of the 
most beautiful combinations in the SUV world. So, I think that's a, a quick enough tour. Uh, one thing I want to show you now is the final thing, which is the interior of the new Trofeo. The significance of which, there is a, a finish in there, unlike anything I've seen before. So we're going to uh, make a real hard cut and jump in that car. And welcome aboard what might be a world first. I do believe this is the first time that this car has been shown to the public in the UK. Now we're very familiar with having carbon fiber in cars, particularly cars which are uh, sports orientated. However, this is a really interesting finish. So we've seen gloss carbon, we've seen matte carbon, exposed weave carbon, we've seen artificially. This is real exposed weave carbon. It's got, a, it, it actually has the texture of it. There are certain cars which actually print the aesthetic look of carbon and they claim it's carbon. Uh, this is the real deal. This is an actual cut, dry carbon exposed weave. It's so real that uh, Maserati had to develop a new cutting technique. The issue with cutting carbon fiber is that the ends of the material fray and you don't get a very crisp clean finish. So Maserati have had to come up with an, an entirely new way of cutting carbon to finish it without a gloss, without any finish at all. And what's great about it is, I don't think you realize how many surfaces that you actually interact with when you're inside a car. You're constantly touching and interacting with various things. When you just rest your arm on here, you feel this nice wave pattern underneath your wrist. When you interact with these slots to open simple things like drinks holders, you're touching bare ex exposed carbon. And it might seem like such a simple thing, but Maserati are all about uh, immersing you in the further story of the brand. Touch points like this remind you that the lineage of this car came from things like the MC12 behind us. And that's why it makes sense for these guys to have a roaring V8 engine in an otherwise very practical car. So I want to be getting in one of these very soon. Who knows? There might end up being one on the channel if I fall in love with the drive as I did with the Lusso Levante. Okay, here we are inside the Maserati Ghibli with Mike Bisco, general manager of Maserati UK. Um, as far as titles go, that's up there, mate. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Mike and I were just having a chat earlier off camera about what Goodwood means to us. Can we run by your experiences of Goodwood? I was saying earlier that I've been coming to tell I was quite young. You've been coming for how long? I think probably the best part of 22 years. I, I, I can't claim to have been here at the very, very beginning, but... But that's not far off. But not far, not far off. Fabulous. Yeah. So how yeah. important is it, or what does it mean for Maserati to be here? I mean, for us today, you know, this is, I mean, this is, to all intents and purposes, the British Motor Show. Absolutely, yeah. And for us, it is as important in global terms as Geneva or Shanghai or Los Angeles or, I mean, it is, it is a tier one motor show in, in, in the way that we would define it. I think here, you know, it's a particular experience. I think, you know, as we were discussing before, and when we were having a chat earlier, I mean, the, not only being able to see the cars here physically and obviously all the modern cars we have, but also all the historic cars, mm -hmm. And the thing that makes this experience truly unique is actually seeing the cars in action, hearing the cars. You know, in terms of the historic cars, seeing the car from the right car, from the right period, and very often with the driver who was made the yeah. car famous at the time, and all together and not kind of roped off and untouchable, sure. but you know, approachable. You can talk to these guys, yeah. you can, you know, look inside the car. I mean it's it's just a it's just yeah. an incredible experience. I mean on that note, we're both very fortunate to have passes here to the driver's lounge yeah. how surreal is it? i mean yesterday yeah. i was in there having yeah. my full english yeah and you know like jensen button walks yeah, yeah. in <laughs> yes <absolutely. laughs> like, like while i'm halfway yeah. through my you know eggs yeah it's an unreal event for me looking at where maserati started as a racing brand yes. first and foremost mm -hmm. to be able to carry that heritage through yeah you've got an mc12 here and it's yeah, actively yeah. live running up yeah. the hill as chance we have it we we've arranged to bring three and there's somebody else who brought another one so <laughs> actually there are four mc12s here <laughs> unbelievable uh, uh, now, bearing in mind, yeah. we, you know, in terms of the, I mean, these are all uh, coarse, uh, Vesuvian coarse uh, mm -hmm. 
so not the uh, the road going version. They're all they're all race or or, uh, or uh, special series versions, of which we made what we made 12, 13. Yeah. Yeah, so wow. four of them actually here at Goodwood oh, yeah. this weekend. So yeah. Ferrari, you know, build all of our all our petrol engines. Really I had lifted up the bonnet earlier. You've got the iconic red cam tops there yeah. with, with your carbon plate on top. Yeah. I mean, as far as a marriage of two brands goes, it's yeah. pretty up there with something special, isn't it? Thanks so much for your time. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Have fun. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Pleasure. So as I mentioned at the beginning, that was my fourth and final day at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Massive thank you to Maserati for making my final day here incredibly special. Now I've got to work out how to get my hands on one of those Levantes. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.